Greetings and welcome to another impressions video here at Words About Games and today we're going to be looking at Battlefield 5. Battlefield 5 is the latest entry in DICE's venerable first person shooter franchise, taking the series back to its World War II roots. Players will experience some of the lesser known conflicts and arenas of the Second World War, whether through the anthology-like narrative mode War Stories or one of the many competitive multiplayer modes, including the highly atmospheric Grand Operations, which is an easy standout as the game's best mode. While the single player stories are fairly well written and crafted, with obvious polish and attention to detail, they're obviously not the main focus of the Battlefield experience, which is par for the course with most major first person shooters these days. A single glance at Call of Duty's total lack of a single player campaign this year is proof positive of this. Battlefield 5's war stories are fairly interesting in their own right, attempting to tell evocative stories set in some of the less famous arenas of World War II. They're fine for what they are, even if they feel a bit uninspired, leaning heavily on the one soldier against an army mentality that runs counter to both Battlefield's core experience and the goldmine of narrative potential of World War II. They're fine for what they are, but you'll probably struggle to remember the details within a matter of days once you've left them behind. Interestingly, these narrative episodes aren't even where Battlefield 5's best stories come from. That honour, as strange as this may sound, comes from Grand Operations, a 64 player competitive mode that takes place over several days and sees the Allied and Axis powers fight over a series of dynamic and changeable objectives in such varied environments as the Norwegian Mountains or a bombed out Rotterdam. When I say storytelling, I'm not referring to the short narrative vignettes that give you the context of whatever battle you're partaking in, but rather the stories that will emerge from the battles themselves. Grand operations are huge bombastic affairs that come closest to accurately recreating the atmosphere of being engaged in a battle during World War II. Those so-called water cooler moments that all multiplayer games chase, but few actually manage to achieve. The battlefields in Grand Operation are majestic as two teams clash. Infantry, tanks, planes and more clash in huge set pieces that value teamwork, strategy and playing objectives as much as landing headshots or maximising your kill-death ratio. Bullets fly, buildings crumble under the explosive action and it's easy to lose yourself to the feeling that you're in the midst of a pitched battle and not just playing a massive team-based PvP shooter. It's all well and good playing through Battlefield 5's series of scripted war stories, but in Grand Operations, you're the soldier part of a squad that's part of the larger company that's engaged in an actual dynamic battle that does a better job of capturing the atmosphere of fighting in the Second World War. Even smaller touches, mostly driven by Battlefield 5's impeccable sound design, with characters referring to each other by name, screaming in pain as they're injured, or crying out for medics as one of their brothers or sisters in arms falls in combat to help ground you in the moment. It's strange but awesome to be drawn into a PvP multiplayer mode by its atmosphere, role-playing potential, and attention to detail, more so than its actual shooting mechanics. But that's the feeling I get when playing Grand Operations. There are of course other modes which are more traditional for a first-person shooter. Team Deathmatch, Conquest, and more offer the most standard online FPS gameplay, if that's what you're looking for, and how often you'll dip into those will depend entirely on your own personal tastes. There are a couple of pretty interesting modes available outside of the regular lineup, like Breakthrough, which sees an attacking team having to take numbered sectors in sequence from a team of defenders. Of course, this being a modern, competitive first person shooter, no matter how you choose to interact with the game, you'll be levelling your character and weapons up. Battlefield 5 is class based, with four core classes and a handful of vehicles that unlock new customizations in the form of new weapons, gear, upgrades, and cosmetics that allow you to tailor your characters to your own personal playstyle. It's an entirely functional system that fuels your progress through the game. The shooting mechanics are similarly excellent. Of course, that's par for the course when it comes to one of the biggest first person shooters in gaming, refined over the course of many years. It almost feels superfluous to even point it out in these types of reviews anymore, as if the core gameplay mechanics of a Battlefield title would be anything less. If I didn't mention it though, I'm sure I'd get endless people pointing out that I skipped over it, so here it is. It's fine. Of course. There are a few minor quirks and strange design decisions outside of the core mechanics of the game, however. Battlefield 5 suffers from some stilted or glitchy animations from time to time, especially if you're crawling, which can feel more like you're floating when you're doing it on a hill. And there are some particularly hilarious if immersion-breaking deaths depending on how the physics engine decides to play things out. Loading screens can take an age to finish from time to time, and there are some odd quality of life decisions that I'm sure will be reversed in the coming months, such as needing to set loadouts twice for the same class, once for your allied character and once for your Axis character. All in all, Battlefield 5 is pretty much just another Battlefield game. That's certainly not a bad thing, of course, especially if you're a fan of shooters or the World War II setting. The shooting is tight and responsive, the guns are fun, and the vehicles and destructible scenery are excellent. 
There are some standouts here, particularly the surprisingly atmospheric and immersive grand operations that feels like it thrusts players into the midst of an actual battle, rather than just being another PvP mod. If you're looking for an entertaining first-person shooter, you could do far worse than checking out Battlefield 5. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If you've enjoyed it, please keep it here at Words About Games. We've got tons, tons, tons of content, including our weekly podcast, more impressions videos, patch notes, and our weekly indie game of the week. We also stream over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash wordsaboutgames every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. And most importantly, have a great day.